Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. By the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. First lesson is from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you, a multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle today, or the psalm today, Psalm 72, we will sing, or will responsibly do by half verse. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously, and the poor rule your justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people, and the little children bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure. He 
shall come down like rain upon the mown field. In his time shall the righteous flourish. The kings of Tarshish and of the isle shall pay tribute. All kings shall bow down before him. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. A reading from St. Paul's letters to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote down in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become follow, fellow heirs, members of the same body, and shares in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I, I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created everything, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Lord, in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord Christ. changing God, today you reveal to people of faith the resplendent fact of the Word made flesh. Your light is strong, your love is near. Draw us beyond the limits which this world imposes to the life where your Spirit makes all life complete. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. New Year. Happy New Year. Hope all your holidays were safe, happy, and filled with joy. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Actually, it was yesterday, but we translated it to today so that we could celebrate it together. This day is often referred to as Twelfth Night or Three Kings Day, and it is the day which closes the 12 day celebration of the Feast of Christmas. Wonderful decorations will come down, 
life and worship will again return to some semblance of normal, or at least ordinary. Epiphany, however, is a major feast day of the church in itself. It is one of seven principal feast days of the church. Yes, Christmas and Easter are two of the others. The rest can be found in the front of the prayer book. In fact, it was celebrated in the early church long before Christmas was actually celebrated. For the first several hundred years in the development of Christianity, Epiphany was actually the celebration of the birth of Jesus. It encompassed his birth, baptism, and his first miracle at Canaan, all events that manifested his divine presence in the world. By the mid-fourth century, the birth of Jesus in the Western Roman Church was being celebrated on December 25th, with Epiphany coming to be celebrated on January the 6th, hence the 12 days of Christmas. So just what is all this Epiphany stuff about anyway? Epiphany means manifestation, or revelation, or appearance. The feast day is therefore the celebration of the revelation to the Gentiles of the infant Jesus as the Son of God. Epiphany has long been associated with the visit of the Magi, or the three wise men, or the three kings. We are all very familiar with the story we heard again in our Gospel reading this morning an account that appears only in Matthew, of the wise men who saw the star of Bethlehem when it first appeared. Realizing its importance, they undertook a long, difficult journey as they followed it until they were led to the infant Jesus. When they finally came into his presence, they knelt, worshipped him, and presented their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So who were these wise guys? The Magi are generally considered to have been astrologers from Persia, what is today Iran. They are therefore seriously Gentile. Matthew does not tell us how many there were, but tradition has settled on three to match the number of gifts. Matthew simply calls them wise men, but later tradition made them kings. Legends developed century later that gave each of them names. Perhaps you remember Gaspar, Malchus and gave them each a biography. There is a large shrine behind the altar in the Cathedral of Cologne that traditionally holds to contain the bones of the Magi. They have come to represent what is considered to be all the races of humanity at the time, with one being European, one African, and one Asian. Jesus, then, is revealed to the whole world as the Messiah for the whole world. So what about those gifts? All three were valuable gifts often given to kings. Over the centuries, they have also come to be considered symbolic of different attributes of this newborn child. I'm sure we're all good with gold. Gold has long had held high value in human history and was symbolic of kingship and human authority thinking most of us would be pretty pleased to get a little gold every now and then. Anybody get some gold for Christmas? Earrings, jewelry, rings. What about the other two, though? We don't think much of frankincense and myrrh these days, and probably consider them to be pretty insignificant gifts. In Jesus' time, however, both were often much more valuable than gold. Frankincense and myrrh are both gum resins, basically the sap from special evergreen trees native to the Arabian Peninsula. Both were used in the temple in ancient Jerusalem. Frankincense has long been used in worship of the divine, and as a gift in our story, acknowledges the divinity of the infant Jesus. Myrrh was used as an embalming oil by the Egyptians and as a medicine. Recent research has actually shown myrrh to be able to help lower blood sugar levels in diabetics and lower blood cholesterol levels, as well as helping with skin irritations. In our story, however, it symbolizes death and the sacrifice the adult Jesus will ultimately make. And so we see how all these elements come together. 
Jesus, the very Son of God, is born into humble circumstances as foretold. The elite representatives of the chosen people to whom the birth of this special child has been foretold and who have long awaited his coming are blind to what is happening in their very midst. Foreign Gentile travelers from afar recognize the signs of his birth and at great inconvenience travel a great distance in order to pay homage to this special infant and present him with rich and symbolic gifts. It is plain from the very beginning that the ministry of this child will embrace all the world. It will embrace you and me as well. For we are all on the road to Bethlehem to see for ourselves what great thing has happened there. We may have not seen the rising of a star in the heavens to lead us as did the Magi. We may not have been serenaded by chorus of angels as were the shepherds in the telling of Luke. But we are all wise women and men, making our pilgrimage to Bethlehem that we too may worship and pay homage. And we take this trip together. It is not a race or a contest to see who gets there first. It is a journey we take together as the family of faith we are. We learn from each other as we go along. We help each other, we support each other. We have our occasional setbacks and hurdles, but we always maintain our focus on where we are going. For we are all pilgrims on the road to Bethlehem. And what gift shall we bring? I'm running a little low on gold these days. We have a little frankincense in the sacristy. What gifts do we have to bring? We are a diverse and wonderful group. We all have our special gifts to bring, to share in service to our faith and to one another. We all have our special and individual talents that combine to make the whole of our community of faith much greater than the simple total of all parts. It is what we are called to in our service and honor and worship of the one whose birth we celebrated this season. We are all called to be pilgrims together on the road to Bethlehem that we may more deeply know the one we call Lord. We are called to maintain that witness and service to one another and to the world at large. It is the revelation of that call, that ministry made known to the world then and now, that we celebrate on this feast of the Epiphany. Amen. Now let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God of the God, one life from life, true God from true God, who died from God.
You will find us on page four of your bulletin. Please respond in the full verse. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who, who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or any trouble. And give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may find in your will, walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. time with this strange weather we have today it's you know as I was standing up here looking out and watching seeing the glow of the trees and the lights I mean it's, it's like we're having an evening service isn't it? I mean I know the days are supposed to be getting longer now a um, couple of announcements um, our Wednesday healing service I know I understand that was a tradition here for quite some time and has sort of not been happening for the last many months that will be resuming this Wednesday at noon, and it will be in person. And I'm thinking it's going to be, maybe, I haven't chatted with you about this yet, but I'm thinking it gets Zoomed as well. Is that true? Do you know? Nobody knows. Okay, we'll figure that out. But it starts this Wednesday in person at 12 o'clock in the chapel. Okay, so anyone who's interested in that, it, it will be a Eucharist. Um, and it's a healing service with anointing and laying on hands. 
So, um, and that will then be, the plan is that that will then be a weekly service every Wednesday. Um, I'm sure you've noticed there's a little bit of a change in the bulletin this week. Um, there will be more coming, we'll just, just to prepare you for this, okay? Um, right now we've got, we've included the Eucharistic prayer. Because I, I just think it leaves everybody hanging when it says Eucharistic prayer B, and then the next thing is the end of the service. It's like, wait a minute here. So we've included all the Eucharistic prayers. Okay, I'll give you a little heads up just so you're aware of it as we move towards Lent. The words of the hymns are going to be dropping out, and you'll. I know this is a little bit of work, but you're going to need to pick up a hymn or one. Oh, I know I see something right there. Oh. oh. <laughs> But so that's sort of where we're going to, to get the, to get the bullet a little more concise, as well as um, a, a little more convenient and welcoming as we invite people to come join us in church. Any birthdays this week? Yes. Oh, come on, we had no Sagittarians, and now we have no Capricorns? What? Yes. <laughs> birthdays? Birthdays? Don't be afraid. It's your birthday. We're going to celebrate, okay? It's all right. <laughs> When's your birthday? The ninth. The ninth in yours? The twelfth. The twelfth. Okay, great. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Francisca and Bob, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy New Year. Happy birthday. Being a Capricorn, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Any anniversaries? Nobody got married on New Year's Eve? Which I don't think is a great idea, but that's just me. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word as spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, for us our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gift of God for the people of God. Come, let us adore him.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that Spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. May God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each of you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.